The Miami Dolphins cut defensive tackle Tier Tart on Tuesday, signed his replacement this morning. We heard from Mike McDaniel on offensive guard Isaiah Wynn and much more here today on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip of the cap to our everydayers because it is your team every day. We don't just say it, we live it here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Playoffs have wound down. The sports have stopped sporting the way that you want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking all customers up with a boost or bonus daily. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Lots to get into. Yesterday was uh, putting the final recap on the player performances from the Friday night preseason game against Atlanta. Tomorrow, before practice, we're going to preview some of the, the matchups to watch with the Miami Dolphins and Washington Commanders, the one joint practice before the preseason game on Saturday. Today is kind of getting caught up with what has transpired throughout the course of the week. And I think you look at defensive tackle, there's been some personnel moves there. There's been some personnel moves on the edge, uh, but you kind of felt that coming, especially when uh, Miami ends up having to unfortunately put both Cam Brown and Grayson Murphy on reserve IR, which ends their season. Uh, so we won't see those guys again until next off season, but, uh, defensive tackle, very competitive group of players. And as we outlined yesterday, a number of them performed admirably well, but the dolphins cut to your tart yesterday, uh, and have moved on and have since signed former Florida state Seminole, Robert Cooper to serve as his replacement on the dolphins, 90 man roster, up until the end of the month when the Dolphins have to cut to 53 players. McDaniel, when asked about Tier Tart, uh, kind of described Miami as not a total fit for Tart and an opportunity for him uh, to go land somewhere else before the big exodus of talent across all of the teams when they cut their rosters effectively in half to go from 90 to 53 players. And I know it's not exactly half, I'm not a math guy, but I, I, I know. <laughs> I know. Half of 90 would be 45. I can do that. Uh, but getting Tier Tart an opportunity to jump on finding his next spot when they already felt as though it wasn't going to be a good fit. I think there's a couple of things you can maybe read into that. Um, uh, I think first and foremost, uh, Tier Tart and the reasons and why it didn't work out in Tennessee last year. Uh, it was reported as though there were some effort and consistency issues with Tart in a contract year. Miami uh, picking him up, really hoping on a one-year effectively minimum deal. If he's not going to be motivated now, when is he ever going to be? And I just don't know like the light ever came on. And Mike talking about it being a fit, I kind of buy that. I don't think that's just coach speak either. You get the sense from Tart. And what he's been interested in in pursuing from a contract perspective, this time last year it was perceived he was going to be a 10 plus million dollar year player on a new contract and things have just totally gone sideways for him. And I hope he finds the right opportunity to make the kind of plays that he's hoping to make so he can find that fulfillment. But you get, you really do get the sense seeing what this defense looks like, understanding he's probably going to be predominantly an A-gap defender with Brandon Peely and Benito Jones as the other guys kind of in competition for that. And then their new addition, Robert Cooper, those guys don't make plays. Those guys aren't asked to make plays. Those guys are asked to make life of interior offensive linemen hell for trying to get off the block of the point of attack and create movement. And you're supposed to anchor and hold ground there. So if Tier Tart wants to be a player who makes more plays, being an A-gap defender in this defense, is not really where you're going to find plays to be made. So I kind of do buy it from Mike McDaniel's perspective that, hey, when we sit down, it's August 14th or August 13th yesterday when they made the decision. Um, 
let's let's go in a different direction. And I think they're the the player that they have signed in Robert Cooper to fill the roster spot speaks to that too. Because Robert Cooper has never really been a spat, splash player at Florida State. And he has some physical question marks. You know, he's been on Florida State's rosters as high as uh, 335 pounds. When he came through the pre-draft process, he was six foot one. Uh, his pro day had him at 310, which is surprising. Uh, he did not work out, though. He had a shoulder injury uh, in January of 2023. He had shoulder surgery, so that prevented him from working out. Uh, so maybe realistically with strength and, and upper body strength, maybe he's heavier than that. But that's a player you expect to be an A-gap defender, a guy that isn't easily moved. Uh, Cooper is a redshirt senior who across all of the years in, in which he played at Florida State managed two and a half sacks, managed 13 tackles for loss across five seasons. He's not a penetration player. He is a dirty work player. And as far as somebody who holds the point of attack, the biggest question that you have with a Robert Cooper is his length uh, from an anatomical perspective, his reach, his ability to stack the point of attack. But then again, your nose tackle types, particularly with what Miami has, these guys aren't long either. They're just large mass guys that you understand are, are going to occupy space. Do I think Robert Cooper challenges to make the roster? Probably not. Do I think Robert Cooper can be a nice uh, fail-safe practice squad type of candidate? Yeah, I do. So I think this is a worthwhile player to bring into the picture for Miami, but I would definitively put him third on the pecking order behind Benito Jones as your primary nose tackle. And Brandon Peely is the developmental type. And then there's other guys that can play on the nose in certain situations. Neville Gallimore played on the nose at Dallas in pass rush situations. Calais Campbell in Baltimore played on the nose in pass rush situations. I think they have enough other guys that can be relatively stout but if you're looking for just, hey, be the lump on a log in a bog in the middle of the lake who doesn't get moved, Benito Jones. The ceiling's not there for much anything else, but that role doesn't call for anything else. And Benito Jones said that himself when I was down at the training camp, and he was asked about this defense and uh, what it provides. And he's like, man, for me, it's, it's just don't get moved, <laughs> right? Be tough. Embrace dirty work. Don't get moved. And that's the life that you live as that role in this in this defense. Now, uh, speaking of line of scrimmage in the interior line, Mike McDaniel spoke this morning and touched on Isaiah Wynn. I have some thoughts about what Mike McDaniel said and the tone in which he said it. We're getting into that next here on Locked on Dolphins. So make sure that you stick with us. We all love sports and Never want them to stop. And that's what makes this time of year so challenging because we're in the heat of baseball season. Football slowly creeping its way back. Basketball and hockey aren't here yet. You're kind of in a period where the sports aren't sporting the way that you want them to. But FanDuel keeps the action going whenever you want. All you have to do is open up the app and dream up bets whenever you're in the mood. This summer, FanDuel's hooking all customers up with a boost or bonus daily. or something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com. To start making the most out of your summer with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Been one of the lessons for um, my daughter, who's getting ready to turn four this winter. It's not, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And Mike McDaniel was asked about Isaiah Wynn for another update on the status of Isaiah Wynn. And it wasn't necessarily what he said because he said the right things, but it was the way he said it that has me speculative. And it's this is purely speculative on my part. I want to be abundantly clear. Isaiah Wynn could show up to the facility tomorrow and be activated off the PUP and practice. But the way that Mike McDaniel said what Mike McDaniel said has me feeling that's probably not the case. He was asked if it's the same quad issue. Uh, that ended Isaiah Wynn's season last year. And Mike McDaniel effectively said, and I'm paraphrasing, um, sometimes with an injury like what Isaiah had, there are things that can compound. It's a lower extremity injury, and I'll just leave it at that. 
Mike's asked about just about any other player on the roster. We haven't seen Javon Houghton today. We, we haven't seen Javon Holland in a couple days. We have an update there. We haven't seen Jalen Ramsey in a couple days. You have an update there. Uh, Jalen Phillips working on the side. You have an update there. Uh, guys that are on the PUP, guys that had season in your injuries last year, guys that they're being proactive, as was the case with both Jalen Ramsey and Javon Holland, so just minor bumps and bruises to make sure that when they, are, they go, they're full go, and they don't carry anything with them negatively into the season, all that stuff. But Isaiah Wynn, sometimes there's things that compound. It's a lower body extremity. I'll leave it at that. That doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies, right? And I know the last time that Mike was asked about Isaiah Wynn, kind of got the same thing. And I know Mike kind of got spurned and burned with the Byron Jones stuff in 2022 with kind of the optimistic tone. And that one never came back. Like Byron Jones never came back. I'm not saying Isaiah Wynn's never going to come back, but I do think it's particularly notable that Mike is a little bit more guarded talking about Isaiah Wynn. And this is a player that it's well-documented. Injuries are a piece of the puzzle with this player. And now it's August 14th. You had a season-ending injury in October, and we're still having lower extremity issues that have compounded in some way, shape, or form from that. I don't think it's going to happen. Like at, at this rate, I don't know if I would be surprised if if Isaiah Wynn is uh, one of those players who's placed on IR at, at a cut down day. You have to be put on IR on the day of cuts in order to be eligible to be brought back at some point throughout the course of the season. Or alternatively, they may they may cut their losses altogether. And again, Isaiah Wynn may come back tomorrow and be ready to go and practice, in which case I'll have egg on my face. But if I'm reading in between the lines on what Mike McDaniel's saying and how he's saying it, it doesn't feel like he's particularly close. So I don't know what you count on from Isaiah Witt. Now the good news here is Robert Jones, who had the orange practice jersey yesterday, has been good. He's been good. You still have Jack Driscoll and Liam Eikenberg as players competing for that other spot when Aaron Brewer comes back from whatever ailment with his hand he's currently dealing with, which he is week to week. You've lost Keon Smith, but I didn't think he was an option inside a guard anyway. Lester Cotton performed admirably well in the first preseason game. I think both of those guys, Robert Jones and Lester Cotton, and I'm about as low of, of a analyst on Lester Cotton and what he did last year with the snaps that he had. Uh, those guys, I think, get a little bit more runway. And Robert Jones, I think, should be penciling in as your starter at left guard. But between Lester, who was not good last year, but had a nice first preseason showing. Jack Driscoll, who had an excellent first preseason showing. Lee Eikenberg, you got three guys that, okay, can, can somebody claim that spot? And if not, you still have time. There are players who are going to be cut from other places. There's potential trades to be made. I know everybody's sitting here waiting on bated breath for it to happen. But I don't think you get any more insurance from Isaiah Wynn, and I wouldn't count on it. Anything you get is house money. And that's just me reading in between the lines on what Mike McDaniel said, how he said it, and the fact that I was a training kid for two weeks. I didn't see Isaiah Wynn once. I've not seen him. So it's not like there's there's guys that are out there on PUP wearing practice jerseys, uh, doing work on the side, like not Isaiah Wynn. So that was the biggest takeaway for me was the, the more that Mike gets asked about this player, the shorter the answers get. And if you know one thing about Mike McDaniel, he doesn't really give short answers. <laughs> so the fact that he's giving one and the fact that it's a saga that bled over from last year with a lower extremity issue and Mike had already kind of did this song and dance with a player two years ago, the tea leaves aren't reading favorably well for me. Now, I think the emergence of Robert Jones gives you a little bit of peace of mind there. And I am willing to say Robert Jones, I think, is going to be just fine as a starter. The other guard spot, still a question. I think you'd certainly love somebody with a higher ceiling. That Kind of the stance that I have is the same. I'm willing to kind of transfer the, the, the title of expectations I had for Isaiah Wynn to Robert Jones. I've seen enough. Between the cut weight, how he's looked in camp, 
how he's handled one-on-one situations. Like, I feel pretty good about that one. And if you can get, get yourself to a spot where you feel good about the other guard spot, and you keep all the guys that are currently vying for that spot as depth players, I think you can be okay. We shall see. Now, some other injury maintenance. We alluded to a couple of those. We're going to touch on those next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins to bring it to a close. So make sure that you stick with us. Today's episode of Locked on Dolphins is sponsored by BetterHelp. What are your self care non-negotiables. Maybe you never skip leg day or therapy day. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even the things that make you happy, it's hard to make time for everything. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, the non-negotiables, like therapy, are more important than ever. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out the brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. A couple of guys that we have not seen uh, this week in practice for the Dolphins includes Jalen Ramsey, Javon Holland, Jalen Waddle's been doing work off on the side. We saw Cam Smith yesterday. Uh, so each one of those first three players who are, are big players for the Dolphins. Uh, Javon Holland, Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Waddle. Whatever it is that those three players are individually working through, uh, Mike McDaniel is very clear that those players are players that you're being proactive and protecting the players from themselves. And I know the training staff in Miami, because they've dealt with injuries the past few years, it's a hot button topic for a lot of fans. I would much rather approach it this way than just saying guys are going to have to put calluses, build calluses on all the bumps and bruises and be ready to go. And was it, was Mike, did he sit down with Kay Williams or Kay Adams, excuse me, uh, who did an excellent interview with Tua, did a very good interview with Mike. Um, some good content from Kay Adams who stopped by Miami this week on her training camp tour uh, for the Up and Adams show. Mike was asked somewhere this week about looking at uh, kind of their their workload program and looking at the injuries from the past few seasons and and not just putting blinders on and pretending that it doesn't exist. And, and that was something that you could kind of sound off on with the entirety of your your building, right? Because everybody's, the training staff, the coaches, um, the players, everybody has a hand in all of that. And that was something that it sounds like they looked at very closely. And I'm all for the Dolphins uh, protecting players in early August from things that it doesn't matter if you miss a few days here or there with now. And you saw that at the beginning of this week when Jalen Phillips comes off the PUP, but then it was also like, oh, Jordan Brooks is back. And oh, Jalen Waddle's back in uniform and did stretch and then did some stuff off on the side. Uh, Jordan Poyer's back. And these players that have kind of been MIA and it's like, do we have to be worried? Or is the depth of these rooms already low? What's the deal? Guys missing time. Uh, everybody's hurt. Everybody gets bumps and bruises because football is an extremely violent and physical sport. So if you can put the guys in as good of a position as you can to be as fresh as possible for the beginning of season and don't turn training camp into uh, the kind of physical slog that beats guys down before it starts, I know that's maybe very new age of me to think, and I'd like to think of myself as a little bit more of a traditional football guy. Um, you still have plenty of time to – you still have a month effectively before your first game. It's plenty of time for the guys to ramp up. So for certain guys, if that's necessary, or for certain guys, you want to make sure that they are very physical, you want to limit the intensity in which they're operating with, that's totally fine with me. So it doesn't sound like much of a reason for concern if you go out to practice or you go to joint practice and Holland doesn't participate or Waddle's not participating or Ramsey not. Like, who cares? Just about everybody 
is going to get a dry run at some point in the process. And then they're going to have cuts and you're going to have a little low to kind of get into the flow of what your, your week by week game weeks are going to look like. And they're going to play the first game against Jacksonville. I'll be ready. I'm sure all of you will be ready. And I know a lot of us are, are ready to kind of skip the rest of the preseason as it is already. But I thought it was interesting that Mike McDaniel, uh, at some point this week somewhere, and I wish I remembered exactly who it was with, uh, talked about one of the things that they looked at from an all-encompassing picture with everybody that was involved in their building this offseason was kind of how they handled workload for players. And they are continuing to try to thread the needle with it. But I don't think you have to do anything other than look across some of the other teams across the league. That the, the Detroit Lions had Jameer Gibbs, first-round pick Terry and Arnold, and somebody else leave practice in a span of 10 minutes early this week. Now, it sounds like they fortunately missed serious injuries with all of those players. But are you, are you going to just run guys back out there and, and just let them pretend like nothing happened? Because in November, maybe you're going to have a, a knee sprain and you want to play with it? I wouldn't. San Francisco had to cancel some joint practices because they didn't have enough healthy players to have a competitive practice. <laughs> do you just rub some dirt on it and keep going? Or do you try to get the guys right? I know what I would do, and it's what the Dolphins are doing. Whether or not it works, who knows? That is going to do it for us here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. Hope you guys enjoyed this update into training camp. Tomorrow morning, we are previewing matchups to watch for joint practice. And then we'll get into prepping for a preseason game. Who's going to play? What are we looking for? Uh, recapping the joint practice on Thursday. Lots of great stuff coming the rest of the week. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Appreciate you guys checking out the show. Go Dolphins. Talk to you all again soon.